Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about the professions of psychology and psychiatry. The thing about psychology is that it tends to accept labels for personalities from the profession of psychiatry and then uh, attempt to, to work with those labels in some way that will uh, provide people with a little more competence in dealing with their labels. Yes. And there are many different kinds of psychology. Behavioral psychology is pretty interesting because it attempts a particular goal and it has tools that it uses to achieve that goal as far as behavior modification is concerned. I rather like that notion because it's quantitative and it has an end point and a possibility of success. Behavior modification. Um, there are other kinds of psychology that such as talk psychology that have uh, like an inherent uh, design defect and that has to do with no particular goal being reached and um, or no quantitative goal and uh, and so there's a like a, a subconscious inducement as it were to keep the patient talking through session after session um, which generates of course income for the psychology profession and uh, just leaves an open-ended situation I feel where um, success can't be quantified and there are probably tons of other kinds of psychology and so now I'd like to talk for a minute about psychiatry. Uh, when I was in college, I, I was thinking of um, going into medical school for a while. And so I studied three years of psychology back then, a long time ago. And the thing that I found out, which I feel most likely still holds true, is that there were but a few, maybe a handful of labels uh, that psychiatrists would attempt to apply to the personalities of the people that they encountered in their practices. And those and their um, their intention with regard to those labels was to provide medications, uh, prescribed medications that would um, ameliorate the symptoms of the label for the personality. So so the tools that psychiatrists had then, many years ago, and that it seems to me they may have still today, are what you might call palliatives. They are um, medications that make the symptoms through which the diagnosis was made a little bit better, make the person, the personality, a little more adaptable to the social milieu, okay? And uh, my own feeling about, uh, about that profession that I developed back when was that it wasn't very helpful because it didn't have, um, it didn't have within it the concept of the lifting of the labels and the healing of the, of the soul, the clearing of the trauma and the seal, healing of the soul. And yet, uh, there are instances in other cultures and the, where where these things occur, and uh, uh, and in other professions such as the spiritual counseling profession. So, if you were to take medical science, for instance, you would find many instances where physicians could cure medical conditions, and somewhere the situation was, in their opinion, too grave to offer uh, resolution in a positive sense. Yet, 
even these situations in the new schools in China are being addressed uh, in unique ways, such as uh, the Centers for Spiritual Mantra Chanting to Heal Cancer in China, which I understand uh, t tape, maybe MRI, um, the progress of, of tumor dissolution during the mantra chanting. So I, I don't know for sure how, how often this is successful or for how long, but it does indicate that there are other modalities in cases where labels are applied to medicine uh, that offer the potential of complete remission or complete cure which is a pretty cool notion, you know. And it seems to me like psychiatry could use some tool, some new tool, uh, such as the new languages of light and sound that are coming, uh, being channeled and being made available to humankind during the ascension process. They could take, or some other, some other tool to to map out for their profession cures for the labels, to return people to, to productive um, social contexts. And uh, further, I think in psychiatry, more use should be made of the notion of the healing crisis, which may happen, say, on the death of a spouse or a child, or a significant other. It might happen with the death of a parent, the loss of a job, or uh, perhaps an accident or post-traumatic stress disorder from, from war experiences. So there are a lot of possibilities for uh, crisis interpretation of uh, mental health uh, issues. And so and, and it's so, too, I think, in the spiritual life that there are crises or dark nights of the soul that occur. Uh, actually, they're set in, in our path by the divine to allow us a chance to overcome these crises and to, to step up into to a greatly newer understanding of reality and coping with reality and, and dealing on a higher plane with all that is, you see. So might not psychiatry be reframed in that context, <coughs> in the context of crisis and cure and, and a higher footing? I feel that this might be very helpful to help this, this infant science to become more mature in terms of, of um, soul, soul evolution. Yeah, that's what I think. Well, so long everybody. Talk to you later. Love you lots.